the second NTSC, those new standards put color television, successful color television, into the six megacycle channel, which meant that the broadcasting stations were still within on the air in black and white had relatively little change in the transmitter part of it to broadcast those signals. If CBS had persuaded the FCC to stay in the business there in color, it would have been 16 megacycle channels, a complete change of the system into the UHF. Mm -hmm. So it made a big boost in the accessibility of the general public in having color television by putting it where it could be used in the existing VHF channels in six megacycles channel width. Now, who was responsible for color television? It wasn't just one company. It wasn't just one person that invented television. It's a group presentation from a lot of scientists over the years. And that's so true in the case of color television. The people at the Hazeltine Corporation, Art Lochran and Barney Lachlan, those people out there, learn to do the phase modulation of signals to get color into the narrow channel and still good high fidelity where you have red, blues, and greens in thousands of tints available on color. It's amazing what can be done. There's another fellow who was an independent inventor by the name of Alfred N. Goldsmith. He was chairman of the panel one of NTSC, but he invented the shadow mask which got rid of the wheel, had three little dots, one red, one blue, one green, deposited in millions of them on the face of the cathode ray tube with three electron guns shining through that mask to activate the red or the blue or the green, the modulation for the three were done in the gun structure, made it a simple thing. RCA's first color sets, and I had one of them, had three tubes with cross filters in it. So you look in here and you see the red tube that way, the green tube that way, and the blue tube back behind. You could get picture. Well, it was a monster of a machine. This way, with a color tube, and Dumont demonstrated one of those at our laboratory in color when they were considering this. We had a color machine producing the pictures. That same machine was used in that picture on the wall by the door with the equipment at New York in our UHF station, which we broadcast color pictures 24 hours a day so people developing color could have something to test with. NBC was on maybe 15 minutes a day because they were running a commercial program in black and white. So we put that extra transmitter in New York and we're broadcasting those signals. We put on a demonstration in our plant in New Jersey and invited RCA. We were at war with RCA at that time because they had said, you must renew your patent license. We said, nope, we don't want to. So we had other licensees in for a demonstration of this new color tube, which had the curved faceplate and a big tube with a color machine, and nice movies, and color television. So one of the NBC engineers came in with one of these other groups and saw it. He talked to me and to Alan Dumont and said, this is too important for you to ignore RCA. Why don't you invite Dave Sarnoff to come see this also? So Dave and C.B. Jolliffe, his top engineering operator in the color, came to the meeting. They sat on the front row. I was on the row right back of me. One of my guys, whom I'd hired from Peter Goldmark, by the way, had helped with all his color equipment. So anyway, I was behind him. Elmer Engstrom was there. and. We were producing these beautiful colors on a big 19-inch color tube, the shadow mask inside, curved one. The early RCA tubes had a flat plate going. So I heard Dave Sarnoff in front of me turn to, Elma, to um, uh, C.B. Jolliffe and said, if Dumont can do this, we can also. The upshot was of seeing that demonstration at Dumont he went back and appointed C.B. Jolly, said, C.B., you have the access to all the, channels, all the channels in RCA, whatever you need to pull in here, change the production schedule in Indianapolis on color television, get rid of those flat plates, which are clumsy, and do it like Dumont's doing here. So they changed the whole production line on that score.